Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and in my Suicide Squad review, I asked you to submit all of your questions, so I picked 10 of them to answer in this video with one bonus question. So much to talk about Harley Quinn, the finale, and season 3. The through line in this episode, and something I think that's going to play into the finale, was that line, a bad man turned good. Just remember that whenever you're thinking about the big villains from this season. If you're finding me for the first time, I do Arrow and Flash videos every week. Be sure to subscribe to get everything, and feel free to leave me suggestions for future videos you want to see me do. So let's answer some questions. Careful for spoilers if you're not caught up on the episode yet. Number one comes from ZMusic2013. Do you think that shrapnel blowing up is like a Grundy thing, where they will end up returning looking more like they do in the comics? So Mark Guggenheim explained that they killed shrapnel in the episode just to convey the idea that the Suicide Squad members are expendable. That doesn't mean that he couldn't totally come back in a future episode, but we're supposed to think that he's dead. Don't plan on seeing him again for the rest of this season, but until you see someone's cold body on a table, they are not confirmed dead. And if they ever introduce weirder powers in the show, like magic or the Lazarus Pit, death will essentially become meaningless. Which is why they haven't done stuff like that yet, but I am hoping to see someone literally come back from the dead this season, you know, Coulson style. Question number two, BD Destro asks, do you think that Deathstroke and Merlin are working together? No, I think Merlin's involvement is purely tied to Thea. If there's any Slade crossover, it'll be coincidental. Merlin is such a big character though, I would be totally disappointed if he doesn't fight Slade at some point. Merlin wants to protect Thea, Slade wants to destroy Oliver's family. It only stands to reason that at some point Merlin will end up fighting Slade with Oliver or helping Oliver in some way. Remember the theme of the episode, a bad man turned good. I actually think that that's foreshadowing for Merlin and Slade's character this season. Question number three, Digidestined asks, do you think that Slade could be Roy's father and that's why he survived the serum? That is an awesome theory. Here's actually what the comic books say about Roy's father though. His history's been retconned a few times, his father that is, but for a while he was a wealthy businessman who died in a plane crash on an island, leaving Roy stranded. It's kind of like Oliver's father died in the boat crash, leaving Oliver stranded on the island. Another time, Roy's father was said to be a scientist who died when one of his experiments exploded, which kind of mirrors the Dr. Ivo plot, you know, even though Ivo isn't confirmed dead yet. So you can actually tie Roy to characters that already exist on the show, but I think those are just coincidences. I think that Roy survived just because he's special, like Slade and Oliver. I think Oliver totally would have survived the Mirakuru if Ivo had dosed him with it. It is fun to think about Arrow as having this Empire Strikes Back storyline though. Deathstroke is Darth Vader with the mask, and he tries to turn Roy to the dark side by revealing he can give him what he wants more than Oliver can. I just like the idea of that. Deathstroke Empire Strikes Back. That would make a great spin-off. Question number four. Lunatic Reason asks, They mentioned Markovia again. Anyone want to see the Outsiders like I do? They should do a season with Green Arrow traveling the world on the hunt, or Slade, Rex Mason in Egypt, Katana in Japan, Geoforce in Markovia, and so on. So that's actually a really nice idea, and as Season 3 progresses, I think you'll definitely see Arrow tell more international stories. The universe is always expanding. Just ask Neil deGrasse Tyson and Carl Sagan. Most of the time, though, they don't do stories like that just because they have to focus on building Starlink City stories, which is what this season's Deathstroke A story has been all about. Smaller plots like the Suicide Squad, you know, have to bow in service of that at a certain point, so they can't just jump from superhero to superhero all over the place all the time. But next season, you'll definitely see even more Suicide Squad, more travel, and more new secondary characters. A lot of those new characters will probably be shared with the Flash TV show, just because DC and Warner Brothers is trying to create this unified universe, just like Marvel's trying to do with its movies and TV show. Question number five, Thomas McCain asks, In the last scene with Sarah and Oliver in the episode, when Oliver takes Sarah's hand, did anyone else get a marriage proposal vibe? So that's actually a really nice theory, and if anyone's not familiar with the comics, here's some background on their relationship. There was a certain point several years ago where Green Arrow and Black Canary got married. The show has been shipping them really hard this season, and I've seen a lot of evidence to suggest that Katie Lotz will be back next season, but there hasn't been any confirmation, so Destro could still totally kill her. I'm hoping he just kills Moira. You know, not that I hate her, I just love Katie Lotz so much. And just to hammer that idea home, someone is going to die this season. If the Canary survives through the finale, you know, them doing a marriage storyline would be an awesome cliffhanger for season three, and it would give Oliver's character an interesting place to go emotionally. Remember how he said to Felicity that he has to keep everyone at arm's length, you know, just to protect them. What would happen if he ever got married to someone? 
Sarah said that she's not that girl on the island anymore, so it's possible that they want us to think that she's strong enough as a character to withstand being in a long-term relationship with him. Being married to a superhero is not all fun and games. There is a lot of punching and kicking. Question number six, Rope Yanez asks, who would be your picks for a Teen Titans spinoff? So off the top of my head, I would say Cyborg, Ravager, Jericho, and Roy. I don't know how they do Beast Boy, Starfire, or Raven at this point, just because we haven't seen those types of powers on a live action show yet. And Superboy is just a whole messy copyright issue. I think in season three, what we're gonna see is a mini Teen Titans-esque story. Like Roy and Sin and some other characters will get a side story that Oliver isn't a part of. That'll be the closest thing to a live action Teen Titans we'll see. If it goes well, I'm sure they'll totally develop it for a pilot someday. Question number seven, Jim Moriarty asks, how do you think that the Suicide Squad will be part of the final fight with Deathstroke? So yes, they're actually gonna be part of the final fight. That's what that whole last scene with Amanda Waller was about. They're basically gonna use them whenever Oliver finally goes after Slate to do battle. Episode 18 is called Deathstroke, so it could either come then or in one of the final episodes. Shrapnel is dead for all intents and purposes, so either it will just be Bronze Tiger, Deadshot, Diggle, and Lila, or they'll add another villain like Merlin or Huntress. I'm not expecting any other new comic characters outside of Ra's al Ghul and the two Flash people, Killer Frost and Vibe, but I don't think that any of them are actually going to join the Suicide Squad. The really interesting thing though is, is that I don't think that that final fight is going to be the final fight of the season. I think Ra's al Ghul will come and Slade will end up having to work with Oliver, at least temporarily. I don't think that he'll stop being a bad guy, but it'll be just like Deadshot working with Diggle. They're still self-serving villains, but they just team up with the heroes briefly. In this case, Slade and Oliver will probably have to work together to deal with Ra's al Ghul after he comes. At least, that's if Manu Bennett's comments on the arrival of Ra's al Ghul are to be believed. We'll have to see how it actually ends up going down, but just remember that theme, a bad man turned good. Question number eight, Jose Beltran asks, do you think that Barry Allen will be present for the fight with Slade? So no, Mark Guggenheim confirmed that Barry Allen will still be in a coma whenever this is happening. He won't wake up till the pilot episode of The Flash, so that's why those other Flash characters are cameoing in episode 20. That's Killer Frost and Vibe, but we have no idea what they're doing in Starling City. Question number nine, HG Drifter asks, do you think we'll actually get Oracle or will Felicity fill her role in the Birds of Prey episode? So Felicity is actually going to fill the role of Oracle. I think, you know, because the character is wheelchair bound, we're all kind of worried for her safety. Arrow's just going to change things a little bit so she can become that Oracle character without getting her spine broken. It's just like the Suicide Squad episode. They're going to be slowly developing the Birds of Prey as a thing on Arrow. So there will be more Huntress, Canary, and Felicity team-ups in Season 3. Think of next week's episode as like the beginning of that. They totally will not be best friends whenever they start out though. They'll be developing that trio relationship over time. Question number 10, 101 Movie Games asks, In episode 19, it's called Under the Hood. Do you think that that could mean Red Hood or is it just a play on words? So it actually means a couple things, but none of them have anything to do with the Red Hood. First, it's actually a reference to someone else finding out Oliver's true identity. Probably Detective Lance or Laurel. The second meaning is Roy. His Arsenal Red Arrow persona will be developing more. The episode right after that, episode 20, is called Seeing Red. So I think that will mostly continue the Roy Red Arrow plot. He's supposed to get his official costume this season, so it could be coming in that episode. And one last bonus question. LA Prodigy asks, Do you think that the Arrow Flash universe will ever be part of the Batman Superman movie universe? I definitely think they're trying to make that happen as much as possible. Warner Brothers did have Christopher Nolan overseeing their DC Comics properties like Joss Whedon is doing for Marvel. If you're not familiar, Joss Whedon isn't just directing the Avengers movies. He's like the creative director for the Marvel Universe. That means that he steps into all the movies and TV shows and talks with the writers and the directors to make sure everything blends with everything else they're trying to do. That's why it seems so organized. I don't think that Christopher Nolan is doing that for DC and Warner Brothers anymore, but if he's not, then someone else is. I know Jeff Johns is highly involved with the creative aspects of the TV shows in development. So short answer, yes, they are all connected, but asterisk, you know, not as much as Marvel's universe is connected. So thank you so much for submitting your questions, guys. These videos are always a ton of fun to do. I'll be doing my Birds of Prey video next week. Be sure to subscribe to get that. I'll also try and get another bonus Flash video out soon too. Right now, click here for my Suicide Squad review and click here to learn more about the Flash TV show. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight. High fives.